Hi everybody, I'm Stephen Manley, I'm the CTO at Druva. Hi everyone, my name is Dave Kaldee and I'm a VP of product at uh, Druva. We got a bowl of questions, you want to go first? Describe Amazon Bedrock's impact in five words or less. Rapidly built, dynamic service. I got it in four, <laughs> crushed it. <laughs> but, I mean, but yeah, that, to, to me that's the big thing, is it let us rapidly build a service that evolves. This is right up your alley. Can you explain the evolution of Drew from concept to its current capabilities using Amazon Bedrock? Mm. Oh, great question. Um, so it really kind of started with just experimenting with some generative AI. Drew is is our you know capability that helps uh, customers get the best out of uh, our products. So the idea of having generative AI that could you know maybe answer questions for you. So starting with a Q and A kind of approach was the easiest place to start. So. Immediately, customers wanted to see about their data. So we moved from Q&A only to start adding in some data into that. Um, so ask questions about your, your backup failures, uh, ask questions about you know potential threats in your environment. How can you uh, learn more about your environment, but just ask the questions in the way you understand. Um, so Bedwork is key in that with the ability to have lots of different models that could understand more complex intent than just uh, Q&A. Uh, and then the last step of the evolution is uh, starting to add in more complexity um, where we, you know, questions are more multifaceted. So it's, you know, tell me about this and this, or can you do X, Y, and Z? So, uh, you know, things like knowledge bases uh, have really helped. Um, and, and then the the more advanced models and a range of models helped kind of that evolution from just Q&A to Q&A plus data, and then adding an extra layer of, of context and intelligence on top. A lot of times, I don't know the question I should be asking, right? So, so, so it's nice that I can ask a question and get the answer, but it's even better if you can sort of guide me towards what you should be asking is this. And, yep. and, and, and so how did you pull, how did you make that happen with, with Bedrock? Yeah, it's a great question. And one of the first things was seeing the kind of questions customers were asking. That was the first step. So we could, you know, we, we knew that they were trying to understand the threat. Uh, they were trying to understand when something has gone wrong or if there was a breach. Uh, so that that was immediately you know a challenge we had to solve. So uh, doing things like using knowledge bases in Bedrock with a lot of MITRE attack information, a lot of information around specific uh, threats to your environment. So when a customer asked a question, we could then preemptively pull out uh, pieces of information we thought would be helpful for the next step. So as you mentioned, quite often people don't know the steps they need to go through to understand something, and we want to educate them on the challenge. You know, here is a threat in your environment; you really should know about it. So it becomes both a resolution tool and an education tool at the same time. Quite often people don't have an in-depth knowledge of the threat they're trying to fix. They, you know, they're, they're busy with a lot of other tasks that they're doing as well. So you want to make sure they leave successfully, they have all the information to make the right decision and, and they can solve the problem and the threat and make sure their, their company is protected. So quickly walk us through the architecture of Drew and how does, uh, how does it integrate with Drew's existing AWS infrastructure? That is something that, that is, is really important uh, to, to me. And I think when I talk to our customers, everybody is really reasonably afraid of what, what you'd call the bag on the side architecture, right? Uh, the way lots and lots of products did cloud initially. Well, I'm going to add cloud. And it's this, mm -hmm. and you could tell that it was added, added on. It's a separate management. It's, it's, it's separate security. The whole thing was, was sort of awkward to begin with. And when people came out with real cloud native solutions, like like we did for 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 uh, sort of data protection, data security, they went, oh, that's what it's supposed to feel like. It scales automatically. It just works. So so as we've done Gen AI, it's been a lot of that same thing. Everything goes through the same authentication mechanism. All right. So so you as a customer, when you log in to to Druva, and you're going to use you know Drew. It's the exact same permissions, exact same access as if you were going to click click the buttons or download reports or do anything else. You don't get access to any more than you would have had. You don't get access to any less. So that that security that security model is the same. Uh, same same on the privacy, right? There there's no data access that you have from a privacy perspective that's any different than you had. And so so it's one of the things I've really liked about how we've used Bedrock. You know what what you and your team did is making sure that's an integral part of the architecture as opposed to something totally separate. Because you know, if, if I look forward 18 months, 24 months, 36 months, more and more of what our customers are going to do will be going through the generative AI interface. It won't be going through what I would consider that, that uh, 
uh, legacy style classic, interface, classic, right? Classic where, classic, right? Where where you're clicking in a bunch of places, and to me, that's the the, the biggest difference that, that that we're trying to bring to bear in, into this market. Every time I pick up a new piece of software, one I don't use very often, I feel dumb. Uh-huh. And I have to relearn it. I never want a Druva customer to, to sort of go, oh my gosh, why is this so hard? Yeah. It should, to your point, you should just be able to log in and say, look, I'm just trying to get this done. I'm trying to recover from a ransomware attack. I'm trying to see if there's a ransomware attack. Tell me what you want and I'll, I'll guide you through it as opposed to let me send you to three weeks of training so you can figure out how to use yeah. my product. And 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 the only way you get there is if this is an integral part of the product and, gotcha. and becomes more and more um, fundamental. I think one of the great things that, that um, Amazon have done with Bedrock is it's architected like everything else. And, and so we constantly have conversations with customers and, and they're rightly concerned. But we can say it's architected in the exact same way. Security is handled in the exact same way. Then straight away, people have comfort that actually, well, there's nothing different. Right. You know, everything's handled. Just security. another component. Like, exactly. It's another component rather than being something brand new. And usually when you put AI onto something, people get concerned and they think, well, this is different and, and it works differently. Uh, so I think that's a a great benefit for us that we can just utilize it everywhere and not think this is something different that we have to handle in a different way. Yeah, the, the moment software stops making you feel dumb yeah. and, and, and starts just doing what you want it to do, uh, I think, again, that changes the world. Yeah, absolutely. Okay.